Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, now if you're not selling yourself, some of us are a one-man person show and we sell ourselves as, as coaches. So if you're not selling yourself, but you're selling another person, you're like, no, um, you're a client who says, I need coaching. And your schedule is full. Or it's, 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 it's something that you don't specialize in. Right? And, and you happen to, to think of someone else. That other coach would be a good fit. Now, how would you want to sell someone else to that point? Yes. I, I do it all the time. Um, <laughs> I, I do. We're going to talk to Scott, right? He sells oh. coaches all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, uh, I do it all the time on multiple levels. So, so one, um, you know, I described earlier my niche. It's, it's a very tiny niche. Um, most of the people in this room, their niches are much larger. Mm -hmm. So I get inquiries all the time from people that I can immediately see based on what they're asking for that I'm not going to get fit. And I'm not going to waste my time trying to sell them, sell them something that's not going to fit. So you know, I say, well, tell me more about what you need and let me see if I can <laughs> refer someone else. Now, um, I also have plenty of clients within our relationships, and all my clients are on retainer. Right? I'm talking about hourly work. Um, that's a different topic we can get into today. <laughs> I, I, I think that uh, coaches who are selling hours are doing themselves a disservice. But, but that said, um, within the context of that, there's also certain areas that I will uh, gladly dive into, and there's other areas that clients will come to me and they'll say, hey, you know, um, would you be able to coach our sales team? I said, yeah, I'd be able to, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> um, uh, you know, let me let me uh, refer you to CJ, and CJ can come in and, and, be and, best and, and do that, um, or you know, a number of other things, right? So when I do that, though, the key, the, the operative word is, I'm happy to refer someone with, in whom I have confidence, but I don't sell them, mm -hmm. and, and 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 there's a difference. Um, differences that they're the best person to sell themselves. Mm -hmm. um, any, any, any sale that I would make would be a disservice to them. Everyone in this room as a coach is an expert seller. Mm -hmm. You're selling yourself as an expert. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty difficult for a third party to do as good a job of selling you as you can do on, uh, on yourself. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. I really like the part about no, you're saying that. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm no, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll add on. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's really interesting that, that um, you know when you refer someone to a client, you're referring the best fit. It's not about the sale; it's finding the best fit. So, be it a phone, a person, a coach, a car, whatever, it's just finding the best fit for that client. When I, when I had my wellness center, it, basically what I did for the first three or four months was selling everybody else. I only had one class at my own center in the first four months. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was really busy helping all the other coaches to sell their services. And one of the things that I found was it was talking a lot, like everybody said, about the results. But also, for me, I don't fully sell, because you're right, they only sell themselves. But you set the stage. It's almost like when you go to a meal, if I'm gonna hand off like a referral to somebody, the way I set the plate before they go to that meal with the coach is like the whole way that they get oriented. And it all depends on what they need. But usually for me, I usually focus on their character. Uh -huh. Because for me, especially here, there's a lot of different types of character that we have in coaching. Mm -hmm. So authenticity, and uh, you know, authenticity is the biggest one for me. Yeah. So that's one of the things. But I think I talk a lot about the character when I'm trying to sell the services mm -hmm. of another coach. Yeah. And I'm also talking about the results that I've seen them do for other people that I've referred them to. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and one of the reasons that I put up this this uh, slide is because, you know, I for for me personally, I tend not to sell myself as a coach. I tend to sell other coaches. Yeah. For some some reasons I know, uh, Jane probably can fill in. Uh, we, we work with a number of coaches, and 
and uh, for some reason, one or the other, it ends up someone else is doing the coaching. So, and, and for me, it becomes something that's more detached. So, I'm looking for someone who's a good fit for the client's needs, and then based on whatever is the client's budget, whatever is the market rate, whatever is the going rate that I have to pay the coaches, that's price. And, and there's, there's nothing emotional about it, because it's like uh, I'm using some benchmarks that are out there in the market. And it tells me that, okay, this will be a kind of a workable price, the client is going to be happy, the coach is going to be happy, and we're happy with our profits. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it goes back to, to a great extent to the results. Mm -hmm. um, if you're selling a commodity, an iPhone, then you're right, there's a market price. And everyone knows what an iPhone goes for, or they certainly, in a heartbeat, can look it up on their phone and find out what they should be paying for it. And, uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, as coaches, I'm not so sure that we should be thinking of ourselves as commodities. I think that, you know, depending on who your client is, and, and part of the reason my client's CEOs and, 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 and not executives of Fortune 500 companies is that I never want to have to sell coaching services to a procurement person, <laughs> uh, let alone an HR director. This is like a nightmare for me. The concept of telling them, here's how much I'm worth, coach that person over there. I mean, again, there's a disconnect because the, the value is going to be perceived by the person that gets coached, but the price is going to be compared based on the market. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't pay that much for a coach, right? Um, but if, 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 if you're not in that situation, right, and there's ways to get out of that situation, uh, then I think that, that you've got to consider uh, do you want to be pricing yourself and justifying your price based on, well, that's just the market rate? Or do you want to be charging equitable, equitable compensation for the outstanding results that you're going to deliver? Thank you, thank you. And yeah, yes, yeah. And it's just merely true of us speaking. But there's um, a shift. That, I, that came up during the discussion and the idea that as coaches we are already selling. We're selling ourselves. And when we're in, the fact that we're even saying sales, a lot of people have a bad annotation when we're in sales. I think as coaching, what we're doing is building a relationship. And when you're in a conversation with an each client, you're literally vetting to see if this course is a great fit for you. So you're not selling, you're the buyer. Yeah, they are the one who need to sell themselves to you to know whether or not you know they are qualified to be a part of what you're offering. So that's also another shift that we also need to be making as coaches. Because the thing that I said, I really believe coaching is the silver bullet, and most people don't understand that what we do. So we gotta come across as buyers, where we know who we are looking for. And when we sit down having a conversation, I'm betting you to see would you make a great fit for what I'm creating, for the tribe that I have, and the network that I have. So that, that's a, a big shift that would help as well. Yep. Maybe I, I want to add something. I really like, Scott, what, what you're saying is that uh, the, the, the selling, uh, actually I'm not a professional coach, uh, but I, I, I learn a lot of coaching skills to support people. And I don't use uh, a coach as my my income, uh, uh, my, my salary. Okay. Pay my salary is not actually. I'm sitting in front of uh, the coachee is is because I want to help him or her. Okay. And also, I'm sitting here to spend my time, my experience, mm -hmm. my knowledge to support her for him to solve her issues. Okay. And if you have, if I have, I have this kind of mindset, I never think that I'm sitting here to sell myself. Mm -hmm. I'm here sitting in front of you to bring values, experience, my yeah. time, my whole knowledge to support you. If I have this kind of mindset, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. the people sitting in front of me value a lot yeah. about myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, at the end of the day, if I solve just uh, one problem of, yes. a, for example, a CEO of a company mm -hmm. or a functional lead of a yeah. international companies, they can pay as much as they can mm -hmm. to support this person to get it done. I think the whole mindset is not about selling yourself, 
yeah. is about how you value yourself mm -hmm. about your experience, yeah. your knowledge, mm -hmm. and your time to spend with this first person. So if you are confident about that, mm -hmm. I'm sure he will confident mm -hmm. to pay you as much as he, he can pay. Right. right. This is my mm -hmm. view. This is my view. Right. Yes. Just one quick note on what you just said uh, is what uh, some big coaches out there, Tony Robbins, Ingrid Tiosi, they, they say, they translate that as selling is not selling, but selling is service. And once you reframe it that way, when you actually don't try to sell, but you try to serve, you try to help, contribute, support others, then selling gets a completely different connotation. And then you, if you go from there, then charging, I guess, will also change radically. Exactly. I mean, I, I, I would say that if you sit there, your mindset is, oh, I'm selling myself. I want to charge you. And uh, the mindset as a professional coach is totally wrong. Mm -hmm. It's totally wrong. I think you're sitting there in front of your, your people is about, I bring values. I have a lot of experience which you don't have. I have a knowledge. I have a valuable time spent on you. And then if they have this mindset in there, the whole room, is belong to the coach, and he will follow me about mindset. This is my feeling. How do you feel about that, right? So, so this is this is a very clear uh, 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 learning path. I, I was just going to say that when I, I started earlier. I think the first thing I said was, "I don't sell." <laughs> and, and, and that's really true. Um, at the same time, it occurs to me as I'm as I'm listening to all the discussion and the different points that people that people are making that. I've, an interesting question um, that, that I would uh, ask if it's okay with you, CJ, yeah, yeah, sure. is how many of the, in the room sometimes feel a bit of imposter syndrome? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Imposter syndrome. You play to do something that you are not really good at. Well, no, you, you, you know, I, I mean, I think it, the, the definition is something along the lines of it, that you sometimes question whether you really are the right person to be in that role showing up to do the things that you're doing that this other person uh, has hired you for and you know, i'm the first person to raise yeah. raise my hand absolutely there are times when you know i feel like god i'm kind of an imposter here i'm you know, advising this this board member on x y or z or i'm uh, you know, coaching someone through something that, that I've never been through, right? Mm -hmm. So, so you know, no matter how much experience you have, yeah. you never you've never been through everything, exactly. right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I just think that there's there's something to to be gained from understanding that all of us, I think, most people have their hands raised, certainly, mm -hmm. um, get that from time to time. Mm -hmm. But being able to get past that and still have confidence that that as a coach, whether you're you know trained in um, you know, all the different certifications that CJ has or whether or whether you're coming at it from a different angle, um, that that you are bringing value. Mm -hmm. I Thank would, you. I would like yes, to make please. a distinction there because I think if we say that, then it's true that a doctor has to be having cancer in order to be able to cure the cancer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I was, first, of all, first of all, first of all, I, I was I was reflecting more. I'm sorry, your name, Leo. Leo. I was reflecting more on Leo's, on Leo's comment that, 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 that he's obviously playing more than just a coach. Role. And, and and I agree with you too that that, that, that as a coach, you don't you don't have to be uh, patient, experienced. I think, I think have, we are we are using here so many terms, and we think we have the same understanding, but I don't think we have the same understanding even about selling. What does it mean selling? Do I? Uh, uh, build a connection, or I really sell. Mm -hmm. If you ask, your first question was, um, uh, how would I rate my own selling? I really say two or three. Yeah. I'm very bad at selling myself. But uh, building a connection, uh, making the client feel good, maybe I am not so bad at <laughs> selling myself. That's the referral. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, you are right. I mean. Uh, I also don't sell myself. It's the weirdest thing on, on this earth to go there, hey, I'm a good coach. Would you like to be coached by me? Mm -hmm. I never sold myself in my life. That's why I came, maybe I will start to sell myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, very honestly. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly, yeah. you know, so really selling myself, I'm 
Definitely bad. Right, right. Which brings to a very interesting thing. Now, if you want to approach someone and you want to make an impression on that person, then you could be a suitable coach for that person to deliver whatever outcomes that person want to have. What would you say? Can I ask again? Ask the question. Yeah. So, so if if you if you met someone and you know that you can coach that person to achieve the outcomes of whatever that person wants to achieve, how would you say it? How would you tell that person? Well, yeah. Well, for me personally, I, I won't tell. You know, I'll, I'll coach. I'll get curious. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get even more clarity about exactly what they want to achieve. Assuming that you know it. Well, I won't that, assume. That, that person, I would never assume. That person has <laughs> given you the, uh, the, the hints and information that you know you're a good thing. Mm -hmm. well, if, well, if, if we get to a point where I know that we're a great fit, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll definitely say I'm excited and I'm confident that I can help you achieve the goals that you want. And it's a hell yes for me. And I'll ask them, would would you love to continue this relationship that we're about to create? Yeah. If it's a hell yes, then we celebrate and we, we you know, drink champagne, champagne one day we achieve the goals together. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> How would you want to approach someone that you kind of feel that that could be a good fit, that you can be that person's coach? I kind of feel that there could be a good fit. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of with Dino here. Like, you can't kind of <laughs> feel, <laughs> but at the same time, I've already got all the answers. Like, like I, I think if this is a, this is a kind of a making decision stage, yeah. I will quiet. I will just keep silent mm -hmm. wait until you make, make a decision and say, this is the person I want to talk to. I want you back. I would rather say, let's, let's, let's uh, have a follow up discussion. Mm -hmm. I will wait. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's my, my, my way to do it. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. That's it. In that kind of situation, I wouldn't also say that I'm the best qualified coach or anything. I would listen and then I would empathize. And if what I'm saying and I'm understanding, we're understanding each other. I think yeah. that the understanding is all that's needed for them and yourself to make a decision. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. Now, I'm, I'm, I, I do understand that no, as coaches we listen a lot. So what would be some of the things that you ask and they reply and then you listen for uh, those keywords? What would, be, what would be the questions that you can ask a prospective client and assess that if that's a good fit? Yes. I'll, I'll share, I'll share my, my basic three and then there's, and then there's plenty of others on top. But these, but these are the basic three that, 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 that are part of every initial conversation yeah. where, there, where there's a potential opportunity at least. Um, one, what are the changes you want to make where you think a coach could be helpful? Two, how committed are you to making those changes? Scale of one to ten. Okay. Three, what's the cost if you don't make the changes? Mm, thank you. Mm -hmm. And do you answer these questions? Every single one of them answers. Um, the, the quality of those answers varies tremendously. But remember now, I'm talking about CEOs. So, so none, none of them are, 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 are put off by that. And oh, by the way, if they say, well, I don't know. But you don't ask this question at the networking event, right? No, 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 no. This is, this is, this is, this is not everyone I meet. This is, uh, you know, as CJ's teed it up, this is someone who I believe there's a potential opportunity with because either they've been referred to me or reached out to me or I've met them in some context where now we're taking it to the next level where they've said, hey, what's this coaching stuff about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what, do you, what does it happen if they don't really know? Generally, they don't know the answers to these questions. The, well, because okay. So, sure so question, que question number down. one. Yeah. Question number one. Uh, what are the changes you want to make where, where, where you believe a coach could be helpful? I don't care if, if, if the ultimate is I don't know, or if here's a few things I think, but I'm not really sure about that. It doesn't bother me. Um, question number two. Anything other than a nine or a ten in terms of commitment? Come back and see me when it's a nine or a ten. Simple, done. I, 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 I've saved wasting a whole lot of time on both sides. Um, question number three, um, anything other than significant, and sometimes they'll put numbers on it, sometimes they won't, it doesn't really matter. But anything other than this is gonna be a significant cost if I don't make this change, if it's just a nice to have, again, come see me when you got something that's that's, that's more relevant. Because let's, let's not waste each other's time. But the answer of this so three questions <coughs> is keep changing. A long time, it's my, my experience. So it's, you, you probably 
the first session is, hey, I'll do it, I'll do that. And then two, <laughs> yeah. two or three months later, <laughs> you can't. Well, there might be something happen. Maybe uh, because of organization changes, maybe some personal changes, something. And then they just uh, depressed. So I think the coaching mm -hmm. practice is, is, is uh, really not, is not, it's not about a one time, be committed, do it, and then you say, hey, it's good, and I will do the coaching. It's not. Actually, the coaching is about let him understand what his current situation and help him to go through that process. And also sometimes you make a good commitment. Uh, this happened, uh, but yeah. two or three months later, there are a big acquisition happens. And also put him from this position to that position, they would just don't know what to do. And then at a coach, you gotta you gotta help him to go through that. And again, I think those are all very valid. And, and if I were doing you know, regular or general executive coaching, I think those are all the things that I would be telling you about. Uh, again, going back to my niche specifically, I'm talking mostly to founder CEOs. It's their company. No, you know, no, no, no one's moved them out of their role. Yeah. No, no one's, no one's uh, you know, tell them, hey, you got to go take on some other thing. Yeah. Yes, everything keeps changing, for sure. Yes. But, 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 but when I say to them, where do you want to be in three years? They're either going to be there, or they're going to be on the, the board at that point, or they're going to be retired. But they they have a, a lot to say about where that is going to be, right? Yeah. So that's the difference. Careful to to use the word in the beginning because uh, the CEO normally face a lot of challenges from the board, uh, oh, from sure. from their uh, their line managers. Say, what do you want to do in the next five years? What do you what do you five year plan? What do you strategy? Yeah. Yeah. But as a coach, you come and say, what do you want to do in the next three years? Well, how you make a big commitment? How you, are you the boss or you're the coach? No, or okay, but okay. so, so this is we can, we can take that offline because it's, because it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not the, the plan and it's not the commitment. What, it's what, the what we can the what we can learn out of this is that it yeah, really depends on great, your, great. your audience. It really depends on who you are you are reaching out to. Absolutely. So if you're reaching out to a founding CEO, what do you want to do in, in five years, ten or three years time and how committed you are? If you're, you're if you're talking to a regular CEO, maybe it's not even five years. Because the CEO probably will not be on a job for the next five years, right? He'll be on a job somewhere. So <laughs> it could be in the next couple of years or one year. And if it's a, if it's a, if it's a middle manager, it could be you know uh, what will, what will be your career plan moving forward, whatever forward means. If it's life coaching, what is what, something that you would like to have a positive change in your life and. How is that important to you? So this is also, if, if, if you realize that, this is an opening question, we just want to find out if that's a good fit. And it's also a coaching question. Right, if you, if you reflect on it, there are very, a lot of similarities between what you wanted to pitch your services and a coaching question. They are coaching questions, by the way. They, they, absolutely. <laughs> they're they're, they're open-ended questions. Yeah. And they're allowing them they're open ended questions, and it doesn't really just stop at the what, it yeah. goes into the why, yeah. right? So, that's uh, a lot of times what we do in coaching.